Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today I'm going to teach you how to reconcile your credit card account in QuickBooks Desktop. I'll be using QuickBooks Premier, but the process should be the same in QuickBooks Pro. So, to start with, I've created a sample credit card statement that's going to line up with the data in our sample company. So here's our credit card statement. We've got a beginning balance, some expenses, a payment that was made on last month's balance, uh, and then a finance charge and our ending balance. So just a very simple credit card statement. So to reconcile our credit card in our QuickBooks account, there's two ways we can get to the reconciliation screen. We can go to our banking uh, layout in our home page and click reconcile or we can come up here to banking and click reconcile. So when I click reconcile I get a pop-up screen that's going to allow me to enter my reconciliation information. So make sure we choose the correct account. So we're going to re reconcile my credit card. Okay, uh, The statement date over here on our sample credit card statement is 1231 the beginning balance, I have to click back and forth here, is 147.26. Our ending balance is going to be 1266.65. So these need to come directly off of your credit card statement. Here we can enter a finance charge. So if you haven't already entered the finance charge, if you've already put it into your QuickBooks as a separate transaction, then obviously don't enter it another time. But we have not, so I'm going to enter the finance charge of $5. Okay, it looks like we have to give it an account. We're just going to call it uh, some sort of interest expense. Okay, and we won't give it a class. Okay, so this information has all come directly off of my credit card statement. So let's hit continue. Okay, and it pulls up the reconciliation screen. So these are all of the uncleared transactions you have showing in your credit card account. The key to reconciliation is we need to compare all of these transactions to what's on your credit card statement. And then we're going to look at your credit card statement and see if there's anything that's on there that's not in your books. Okay, so kind of we're going to trace it in both directions. First, we're going to trace from your books to your credit card statement, then from your credit card statement back to your books so we can catch any missing items. Okay, so um, let's see here. So we have um, accounting firm for $300. Yes, that's on our statement. So I'm going to click this button here that marks it. Now notice down here, it is giving us our beginning balance per our books. And then it's adjusting for any transactions we mark as clear. And hopefully that will then come up with the ending balance on our bank statement. So let's just go through here a little quickly. Anderson's hardware, $400. Yep, that's there. Vin's Diner, 263. Yep, that's there. My Electronics Store, 125.41. Yep, that's there. And Kaler's Hardware, 101.21. No, that is not there. However, if we look at the date of this transaction, it's 1 1 2026. So we wouldn't expect it to be on the 1231. 2025 credit card statement so we're just going to leave that unchecked and that's going to make what we call an outstanding transaction so that's going to be a reconciling item you can think of between what's on the credit card statement and what's in our books because this is in our books but it's in our books after the credit card statement date okay let's look at payments we made a payment of 147.26 yes that agrees to the payment on the bank statement so we're going to check that okay now let's look and see, note we are 173.24 off. So let's continue now. Now we need to trace from the credit card statement back to the books. So we'll go over here to the credit card statement. Now as we were doing that first tracing, uh, I just put usually a pencil mark next to the credit card statement so we can see what we've traced. If we look through here, we've traced all of these but not this Postmaster. So the Postmaster charge for 173.24 is not here. And that's our difference of 173.24. So perhaps you have a postage machine, the charge goes automatically, you forgot to, to record it on your credit card. Okay, very simple, very easy mistake to do. So we can record that charge of 173.24 now. Okay, to create a new transaction, let's go 
to our banking enter credit card charges okay purchased from the postmaster on a date of 12 24 2025 getting that off of the credit card statement for the amount of 173.24 okay the account is going to be postage and that's all we need we're going to hit save and close there we go now look posted showed up in our reconciliation so there's no need to close the reconciliation you can just add a credit card charge now it's there trace it click it and there we go now our difference is zero so our account has been reconciled this outstanding charge of 101.21 that occurred after the statement date that's going to appear in our list of charges for next month and next month hopefully we'll see it clear on the credit card statement so we're reconciled difference is zero we can click reconcile now uh, one thing while we're on the screen, uh, notice you can always click modify and modify will allow you to change the amounts that we entered in that first screen. So we entered, remember, the, the beginning balance, ending balance, and the finance charge. Well, you can go back and change those if you need to once you start your reconciliation. So we're all good. Let's hit reconcile now. The screen pops up asks you so you owe 126665 do you want to write a check for the payment of it now or do you want to enter a bill for payment later so personal preference here do you want to pay it now or do you want to pay it later um, if you want to pay it now it's very simple to just click OK it'll bring up the right check screen it'll have the charge it'll have the the check amount going towards your credit card balance very simple to do the if you want to pay it later, there's two choices. You can just cancel out of the screen and you'll just have to remember to go in and write a check later, or you can enter a bill for payment later. Now what this will do is it'll create an account payable to your credit card company. So it'll create an unpaid bill that you will then have to go in and write a check to pay later. But because you're recording an unpaid bill, it'll actually show the payment being made in your credit card account, but then it'll show an accounts payable or unpaid bill that you have to pay yet. So the writing a check is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's do the enter a bill payment for later so you can maybe understand that. So we're going to enter a bill for payment later. Click OK. And this is going to create a bill for that 126665. Now if we only want to pay a portion of the credit card, that's fine as long as you make your minimum payment, right? So we could easily change this to be whatever amount we want to actually pay. Now notice the expense account that is coming out of is not an expense account at all. It is a, uh, a uh, credit card account. Okay, um, so it's a liability account. It's not an expense account. So this is paying off your credit card. We can hit save and close. And now we have an unpaid bill. If we look at our credit card account, so I'm going to go to banking and use register. This is just an easy way to see our credit card activity. So I'm going to go down to my credit card. This is going to be our credit card register. And here you can see um, we have an accounts payable now for the 1266. So the 126665 has been taken out of the credit card account. Okay, but now you have a bill to pay. So we can go to um, vendors and pay bills. This is when we're ready to pay the bill. Enter vendor, pay bill. And here we go. We have a bill due on, on uh, the 30th for 126665. Okay, now we can click it and pay it like you pay any other bill. Okay, great. Um, and that's how you reconcile a credit card account in QuickBooks Online. Hope this was helpful and you have a great day.